Uh, it's 2.30 in the morning. Don't think you'll see me much, will you? It's the plotter, which are on. It's quite breezy. Um, on anchor watch. Pitch black out here, as you can probably tell from that. It's probably not the world's most interesting bit of film. Uh, it's my face plot the light, the plot the look. Uh, yes, a bit breezy, so out here on anchor watch. So, as I might have mentioned earlier, it's still very, very breezy here. Um, I was up in the middle of the night, got up at 2 o'clock, from 2 to 4 I was up doing anchor watch. Um, this hasn't diminished at all actually, it's still blowing, gusting. Predict wind weather maps, they offer you, I think, seven different weather models. And the only one that's anything close to forecasting this is the UK Met Office model. All the other six are showing utter rubbish. And it's been going on now for 14, 15 hours. Now, Shouldn't they be looking at some empirical data? Get their heads out of their computers and look at some empirical data. They must know this is happening. So stop telling me we've got 10 knots of wind. It's ridiculous. So one thing I did in the night, just to make sure depths were reading true on the, on the depth sounder is to get the old lead line out and, uh, and it's a, a device that never lies so basically just grab your lumber lead and we've got a knot in there every metre in the line two three four and then every five metres I've got a bead and if you follow it through enough ten metres I've got a double bead and uh, that is a device that will always tell you the true depth doesn't matter what weeds underneath there or anything. So I did just want to be sure that uh, that we were something like right, you know. And and that sort of analog device works. Unlikely to break. Well, have a look at this morning. It's about 7.30 now. I've been up for a bit, getting ready. We're about to leave. Have a look at this, it's beautiful. Flocks of geese and swans flying over. Danish fisher fellow out there working. Crab pots. A little bit of misty morning haze. Fantastic. I'm about to ruin that by starting the engine.
The engine is finally off. Yeah, we're out of the channel. I just like to keep the engine on that channel, so it's quite narrow. Yeah. Yeah, and also mm. quite windy as well, isn't it? So. Yeah, windy, and you never know if you have to get out of the way or something, or you know. it just gives you security. Feels like a very autumnal morning today. It does, although I think it's going to be lovely later. But um, yeah, certainly autumnal start. It certainly was, yeah. Autumnal morning is a fair comment. Absolutely. A bit of humidity in here. Also cold. Well, yeah, nippy. Sort of. Yeah, yeah I put my shoes and waterproof jacket on. Not because it's raining, but the warmth. We've been working on calibrating Bob the autopilot today and uh, well at the moment he's doing well. I'm not saying this is finished, this process, but um, he's doing a good job at the moment. Steering us along the north coast of Lolland there, which is what you're seeing over there, the windmills. And we're going round to some islands for an anchorage tonight and then on tomorrow a bit further. If it all goes according to plan that is. us going to windward um, as you three three put four knots and we're going to work our way into this anchorage here so that's us there there's a couple of cardinals that we need to pass through in a bit and then uh, we'll see if we can sail in here or if we have to motor it maybe to windward but those two if we can pass tack for those two cardinals well, if we can, we might manage to get all the way into our anchorage. That should be very cool. So guys, it's the next morning and it's a big one. Glorious, glorious morning. Back to me. Well, it's a big one because Elizabeth's last sail with us. She's heading back. Uh, get on with stuff at home and so we're heading to Fordingborg where there's a train station and she can get on and get home um, yeah a bit sad but it's time to enjoy our last sail and it's a glorious day we've got a beam wind fraction forward of the beam by looks like we're doing three and a bit knots and we're on our way to Fordingborg lovely been a while since we've seen the old porridge leg in the, on the go. <laughs> yeah. Breakfast at sea. We've got coffee at sea underway. Now porridge. Life's not too shabby, is it? Mm. Yum yum. It's the island of Fimo. Over there. Fio in the distance where we anchored last night. What speed are we doing, Ibi? 4.5. 4.5 knots. Lovely, eh? Lovely. 
Yeah, it comes, comes up to a nice bit of water up here because when we get up, at the moment it just looks like open sea up there, but there's lots of islands that are quite close together and, and there's a nice little cruising ground up here, another 20 miles up ahead, which is where we're heading. only two on the chart so we're trying to work out what's going on and then they seem to have this void channel here for us to go through keep us out of the way of all their works um, and I think we've got it sussed out now but <laughs> there's a bit of uh, head scratching for a while until we adopted the sneaky plan of following another boat uh, but now it's going well I believe Hopefully after the second bridge, which is actually the first one that's complete, we'll be able to turn into the marina, or harbour, or whatever it is in. Doing well, then. Also, no wind. No wind, no, no. no. no there's a breath on the nose, but there's no wind attacking. Consider attacking. Well, you haven't seen me speaking from in here for a while, have you? Um, in fact, I must redo my channel intro video because it's just a, a tiddly tadge out of date. Um, coming up soon-ish, what excitement. Anyhow, let's get back to the story. Um, we indeed, of course, got to Fordingborg, if, if that is how you pronounce it. And let's be honest, there's a good chance <laughs> it's not pronounced like that. Um, we got to Fordingborg, Elizabeth got on the train, sad farewells and I was there on my own and uh, you know obviously took the opportunity to have a look around town got out for some nice walks soaked in the atmosphere a bit um, and uh, waited because the wind forecast again was another wind another week or 10 days I think of strong winds so I was basically just sat there hanging out waiting for a weather window to to go on um, as I mentioned earlier, one thing I did want to do though was to get up and visit Frederick, who I've visited in an earlier video, who's building a, a plywood junk rigged sailboat, uh, quite different to, to Patia. So I did want to get up there and uh, that worked out and it's coming up next week. decided to take a stroll and went the other way away from town and uh, come out into this beautiful old beech wood it's glorious Go running along the coast along the coast path on this slightly wider track now that's a really old beach the occasional oak in there beautiful bit of forest have a look walking along the waterfront here in this sort of bit of foresty stuff and it's fascinating further in it's beach and oak but along the front here you've got these uh you've got quite a mix of stuff you've got this is a cherry you've got these hawthorns in here here's a crab apple here and there's a little apples on it look you see 
hour or so. And that's it for this week. Saying goodbye from the boat shed. We'll be back on Tapatia next time. Up, going up, have a look at Frederick's project and uh, moving on. And of course, getting very, very close now to the winter upgrade work. Coming soon. Thank you for watching. As ever, a massive thank you to the lovely people who support us on Patreon. If you'd like to support the project from as little as $1 a month, Links in the in the video description. Talk to you soon. Bye.